People often wonder how it is that they can produce their own mushroom spawn and for many years I used to do this. I had a laboratory set up and would spend many hours each week making my own mushroom spawn. But these days I don't do that, we buy it in from a supplier. In this video I'm going to tell you why it is that we do that and why I think that's the best thing for most other people who are growing mushrooms to do as well, particularly when they're getting started. However, there is a way that you can produce small amounts of uh, DIY mushroom spawn at home in a really simple, low-tech way. So in this video, I'll also teach you how to do that. We're going to be showing you how to make stem butt mushroom spawn. Stay tuned. As we mentioned before, making your own spawn can be great because it can be cheaper, you have more control over it, and you get to learn a little bit more about the process of cultivating the mycelium. However, it takes a long time to learn this and you need a lot of extra equipment, you need to learn a whole new process and it can be quite unreliable for quite a while really till you've got the hang of it. And in addition to this, it just can take a lot of time up out of your week. Just to briefly give you an overview, in order to produce your own spawn there are multiple steps in the process. You need to start with a master culture, which might be in a test tube or in a petri dish that gets expanded in onto uh, agar plates. From there you cut out pieces and add them onto grain and from the first generation of grain you're probably going to then multiply it up again into a larger amount of grain. And each of these steps in the process takes time and you need to have a constant cycle of it going as well. So um, just purely from that point of view, making your own spawn is going to add a lot to your workload and in our experience we've found it better to uh, source spawn from someone else and focus on other activities on the farm instead. So that's why we recommend that you just buy a spawn from a professional supplier. You can just cut straight to the process of growing the mushrooms and, and basically the fun part and having success with it. Having said that, there is a way to try and propagate a little bit of spawn very easily at home at the end of your harvest by taking the very bottom of the stems of your oyster mushrooms after you've harvested them and cultivating on from there. So the stem butt of an oyster mushroom still has a lot of life force in it. It's still alive when you cut it off and it will continue to grow if you give it the right conditions. So this is a really nice simple technique for home scale DIY cultivation. It is however less reliable than using grain spawn in the sense that it doesn't have such strong growth and it will give lower yields because we're going to be growing the stem butts on to cardboard and cardboard doesn't have anywhere near as much nutrient as grain. However it can be a fun thing to do so we're going to walk you through how to do it. In a second I'm going to show you a video where Eric will teach you the technique and if you do this yourself at home you just need to know at the end of the process when you've got your tub of colonized cardboard that you can use that in place of the grain spawn and you do that at around about 15% by volume. So when I say by volume, I'm talking about the quantity relative to the quantity of substrate that you've got. So this is something you kind of just judge by eye. If you've got a bag of straw, you're gonna to want to add about 15% of this cardboard spawn broken up in pieces into a certain quantity of straw that you've got. All right, let's take a look at this lesson where Eric shows you how to do it show you a very simple low-tech way of um, growing your own spawn in case you don't have any access to quality spawn. It's using the stem butts of mushrooms. So what I've got here is freshly harvested mushrooms. There's plenty of life in the stem butts of them. What we're going to do is we're going to multiply that up um, using a different food source. So this is card, shredded card. Um, pour, pour boiling water over it and let it cool off a little bit drained it so it's a nice nice moisture but not soaking wet. Right. The other thing we need is an airtight container and what we do is just give it some little air holes. The easy way to do that is just to heat a little screw. To show you that I've done all the other ones previously. So then it's, it really is as simple as squeezing the card, putting some in here, and then we basically layer up 
nice big scissors that I've found and disinfected with a bit of alcohol and boiling water. And then you just spread this in there. And there's plenty of life in that, so it's slowly going to recover. And then what you do is just cover it over with another layer of card. And that really is as simple as it is. And I can show you the two we've done. When was that? That's 11 days ago. So it is really a simple, quick process. And what you can see is all just fresh, white, strong growth. And this is the stuff that you can use in your growing endeavors. You can mix it in with coffee. Just off you go.